Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Morse code is a type of character encoding that transmits telegraphic information using rhythm. Morse code uses a standardized sequence of short and long elements to represent the letters, numerals, punctuation, and special characters of a message. The speed of Morse code is measured in words per minute. The short and long elements can be formed by sounds, marks, or pulses in an on off keying method and are commonly known as dots and dashes or dits and dies. The entire alphabet would look like this. In 1825, the city of New York commissioned Samuel Morris for $1,000 to paint a portrait of Gilbert du Motier, Marquis de Lafayette, in Washington. In the midst of painting, a horse messenger delivered a letter from his father that read one line, Your wife is dead. Morris immediately left Washington for his home at New Haven, leaving the portrait of Lafayette unfinished. By the time he arrived, she had already been buried, heartbroken in the knowledge that for days he was unaware of his wife's failing health and her lonely death, he moved on from painting to pursue a means of rapid, long-distance communication. In 1832, Morris met Charles Jackson of Boston, who was well-schooled in electromagnetism. Witnessing experiments with Jackson's electromagnet, Morris developed the concept of a single-wire telegraph. Morris encountered the problem of getting a signal to carry over a long wire also. His breakthrough, though, came from the insights of Professor Leonard Gale, who taught chemistry at New York University. With Gale's help, Morse soon was able to send a message through 10 miles of wire. Morse and Gale were then joined by another enthusiastic man, Alfred Vail, who had excellent skills, insights, and money, and helped to develop the telegraph more rapidly. Morse made one last trip to Washington, D.C., in December 1842, stringing wires between two committee rooms in the Capitol, and sent messages back and forth to demonstrate his telegraph system. Congress appropriated $30,000 for construction of an experimental 38-mile telegraph line between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, Maryland, along the right-of-way of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. An impressive demonstration occurred on May 1, 1844, when news of the Whig Party's nomination of Henry Clay for U.S. President was telegraphed from the party's convention in Baltimore to the Capitol Building in Washington. On May 24, 1844, the line was officially opened as Morse sent the famous words, What hath God wrought? from B&O's Mount Clare Station in Baltimore to the Capitol Building along the wire. The Morris Code was invented by Samuel F. B. Morris. He was born in Charlestown, Massachusetts, the first child of geographer and pastor Jedediah Morris and Elizabeth Ann Finley Breeze. There have been, and still are, many uses for Morris Code. From its very beginnings, the transmission of intelligence over wire was closely allied with the railroad. The most popular current use of Morse code is by amateur radio operators where it is used as the pattern to key a transmitter on and off. In the professional field, 
Commercial and military pilots and air traffic controllers use Morse code and require a basic understanding of it. Navigational aids in aviation such as VORs, VHF Omnidirectional Range Finding Stations, constantly transmit their identity in Morse code using a three-letter identifier. For example, the Little Rock VOR station uses the Morse identifier LIT. Notice the Morse code letters printed on this aviation chart for pilots highlighted in the yellow box. Military ships, including those of the U.S. Navy, have long used signal lamps to exchange messages in Morse code. Modern use continues, in part, as a way to communicate while maintaining radio silence. An important use of Morse code is signaling for help during an emergency by sending the letters SOS. The SOS signal was rarely used by British wireless operators who preferred the older code CQD. In 1912, radio at sea was only just past the novelty stage. Of over 23,000 registered powered ships in the world, about 1,000 were fitted with radio. Shortly before midnight on April 14, 1912, the RMS Titanic hit an iceberg. By 12.15 a.m., first wireless operator Jack Phillips had been ordered to send the distress signal. He began transmitting the emergency code CQD until second wireless operator Harold Bride suggested half-jokingly, send SOS, it's the new emergency call, and this may be your last chance to send it. Phillips then began to alternately send SOS with the traditional CQD call. Walter Gray, a wireless operator at Cape Race, Newfoundland, remembered his signals for the rest of his life. But uh, he, slow, he was a first-class operator and a fast, fast telegraphist, but he slowed down his speed from, say, 30 words per minute to 15 words per minute to make sure that every ship hearing the signals would, would, could readily copy it. And there was never a tremor from beginning to end throughout all of his transmissions, not once. And he, he kept the full story going about the condition of the weather, about putting women and, and children off in the boats, and, uh, and then he started to say, now sinking slowly by the head. And even when he said that, there was never a tremor out of him. And so presently about half past one at Newfoundland time, uh, silence. The RMS Titanic sank two hours and 48 minutes later, early on April 15th. Another example of the use of Morse code during an urgent situation occurred in 1966 when American prisoner of war Jeremiah Denton, brought on television by his North Vietnamese captors, blinked the word torture with his eyes using Morse code. This is the story that appeared on the ABC Evening News, May 17th, 1966. He's Commander Jeremiah Denton, Jr., a Navy pilot from Norfolk, Virginia, and he was interviewed by a Japanese newsman with permission, of course, from the North Vietnam government. When U.S. Naval Intelligence saw the Denton film, they caught a coded message that he had been sending with his eyes. Pretending to be overwhelmed by the television lights, he blinked constantly. But if you look carefully, the blinks were a series of longs and shorts, dots and dashes. He was spelling out the word torture, hoping that someone would see the covert message and understand that anything the POW said had been forced by torture. For this act of bravery, Jeremiah Denton was awarded the Navy Cross eight years later. Morse code remains the simplest and most efficient way known to send messages via radio today. It is easier to construct a Morse code transmitter and receiver than any other communications apparatus, and messages can be sent with very low transmitted power. Morse code is still useful because equipment is so easy to construct and operate 
because it has the capability to get messages through when other modes fail, and because it is universally understood by operators in all countries and all languages. Morse code will always remain a viable means of providing highly reliable communications during difficult communications conditions.